In this lesson, we're going to explore the characteristics of exponential functions. Now, in order to start this out, we're going to collect some data. So if you can take out a piece of paper, um, just a scrap piece of paper, it could be any size you want. It could be a piece of newspaper, it could be, be a piece of paper from your binder. And what you're going to do is try to fold it as many times as you can. And now there is a myth that says you can't fold a piece of paper in half more than seven times. So try it. See if you can get it to be um, seven times. Now remember that each time you fold the paper it must be rotated 90 degrees. So there's a Mythbusters video where they went through the same thing. I'm going to show this part of the video and then we're going to collect some data. For the number of folds, how many layers of paper do we have? Okay, let's watch the video. Alright, so according to that video and hopefully the folding that you did, um, we could see that yes, for no folds we just have a plain piece of paper laying there. There's only one layer. Now if we move on and fold the paper once, we're going to have two layers of paper. If we fold the paper twice, it's not going to be three layers of paper but four because those two are sandwiched over again. And if we continue with the pattern, we should see that it continues to do what? Double, right? So 2, 4, 8 doubles again to be 16, doubles again 32, doubles again 64. Now in the video they did mention exponential growth. So that's what we're looking at. What does that mean? Well doubling each time is exponential growth. Okay, so if we look at the pattern it says exponential function is a function in the form y equals a times b to the power of x where a is not going to be 0, b is going to be greater than 0, and b is not going to be equal to 1. So what does that mean? Well if we look at our table above it says the exponential function is 1 times 2 to the power of x. Okay, so where do we see that? Well if we have 2 to the power of 0, well that's equal to 1. 2 to the power of 2, well I skipped one so that wouldn't be 2 to the power of 2. 2 to the power of 1, there that's equal to 1, 2 to the power of 1. 2 to the power of 2, there that one is, is 4. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. 2 to the power of 4 is 16, 2 to the power of 5 is 32, and 2 to the power of 6. What does that mean? Well, 2 to the power of 6 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Is that 6? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There you go. If you multiply 2 by itself 6 times, it's equal to 64. But that's not what they were saying. They're saying down here that it should be 1 times 2 to the power of x. Well, if I put a 1 in front of there, I don't think that's going to change my answer, will it? So that would be 1 times 2 to the power of 0. 1 times 2 to the power of 1. If we put a 1 times in front of here, yeah, no way is that going to change what we're doing. So those are equivalent when we're looking at that. Alright, so we can see the pattern, we can see that this is exponential growth, and we can see that this fits our, our function here. But what exactly does this mean? Let's take a look at the next page. It says take a look at the following exponential functions. Investigate any similarities or differences from the graphs of the polynomials. So here we can see that they've taken our function f of x equals 10 to the power of x and they've put it into a table of values. Okay, so plugged in values from negative 3 to 3 for x and figured out what y would be equal to or f of x because we can rewrite this as y equals 10 to the power of x and that means the same thing. We can actually do this in our graphing calculators and I can show you how to create a table of values. So let's do that next. In our graphing calculator I just went into the y equals function where we do all of our graphing and I'm going to put in 10 to the power of x. Okay, if I wanted to graph this that would be fine and it would show me the picture but we want a table of values. So under second graph over here, if you look in the blue that's table, and you'll get our table of values. But it's different than the one in our notes. The one in our notes goes from negative 3 to 3 and it goes up by 1. Where in mine it goes from 0 to 6 and it's going up by 1. So we can change those settings. If you go to second window, that's the table set, you can tell you your table what to start at. So we want it to start at negative 3. And what do we want it to increase by? Maybe we want it to go up by a half, maybe we want it to go up by twos. In this case, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, we want it to go up by 1, so that's fine. Now that we have that, we can go back into second table, and we can see it's doing exactly what 
um, our table and our notes is doing. It's going up from negative 3 to 3 and it's giving us all the answers there. Okay, so let's graph this. So you can go zoom 6 and we can see our diagram. Now it's quite steep. You can see that it's increasing quite quite quickly. Um, if we hit trace, we can see that our y-intercept is 1, okay, and that's important to have on there too. Let's go back to our notes and let's graph this. If it's not at 1, you know you can go second, trace, value, put in x equals 0, and it will give you that 1 value. Okay, let's put this in our notes. So here's our diagram. We can draw our graph. Notice that I have arrows at both ends. This is x, this is y. Another thing you might want to notice is that the graph never crossed the x-axis. So if we go back here, our graph got really close, but it never actually touched. If I zoom in here, maybe I change my window. Let's do my x min. Um, let's go from negative 5. My x max. Let's go to 5. My y min. I'm just going to go to negative 1. If I hit trace and zoom in a little bit on here, you can see nothing's changing there, right? And that line is still getting really close to the x-axis but not really touching. What if I changed my y-max down to positive 1, just to zoom into that? So I'm going from negative 1 to positive 1. You can see, if I just zoom into that part of the graph, your graph is never crossing the x-axis. Okay. So when you're drawing this, you don't want to touch the x-axis at all. That's one of the features of an exponential function. It comes close to the x-axis, but it never actually touches it. We know that our y-intercept here was 1. So x-intercept, well, there are none. y-intercept is 1. The end behavior, it's going from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. My domain goes from negative infinity to infinity. Now my range is tricky. My range, the lowest possible value, I want to write as 0 because it's quite close to 0 even though it's not touching and goes to infinity. But because it doesn't actually reach 0, it approaches 0 but never actually gets there, we're going to put a round bracket here. Now that's not something we're used to, but because 0 is not included, we need to make sure that we use the round bracket. Putting a square bracket implies that that uh, graph is touching the x-axis and actually crosses it. Okay, now in this question, well if we look back, it says that the function needs to be a times b to the power of x, if I'm looking right here. But the one we just did was y equals 10 to the power of x. So it's implied that there's a 1 times 10 to the power of x in there. So that 1 is sitting there. If we look at the next question, we actually have an a value because it's y equals a times b to the power of x. So your a value is 2, your b value is 5. How does that change our graph? So let's go back in under y equals and put in the new equation. 2 times 5 to the power of x. Okay, and you're going to hit zoom 6. Okay, well this looks very much like the graph we just had. If I hit trace, hmm, different. Look at my y-intercept. My y-intercept is now 2. If we go back to our notes here, okay, so my y-intercept is 2. still has no x-intercepts. The end behavior hasn't changed. It's still going from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1, my domain hasn't changed, and my range hasn't changed. Well, when I drew the draw the picture here, still arrows at the end, but my y-intercept is 2. The steepness, yeah, that changed too. So having an a value of 2 changed my y-intercept to 2. Having a a value of 1 gave me a y-intercept of 1. So we can see that there's a pattern with what our a value is and what our y-intercept is. Let's take a look at the next page. Okay, well now I don't have an a value again, so we assume my a value is 1. 
and I can see that my b value is a fraction now. Now that dot isn't a decimal place, it's a times. I don't like putting an x because it looks like an x there. I can actually just put a 1 there to the power of x. So how does having a fraction or a value less than 1 change my graph? Well, let's go ahead and put this one in our calculators. So if I put this one in here, I've got 1 divided by 2 to the power of x. Okay, so my graph looks a little bit different, especially the end behavior. My end behavior is now going from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. Well, wait a minute, that didn't change at all. What about my y-intercept? If I go trace, well, my y-intercept is still 1. That hasn't changed. My domain and range haven't changed. But what has changed is that my graph is no longer increasing, right? So if we look at what's going on in quadrant 1, the arm is down. Whereas when we were doing something positive, not positive, sorry, greater than 1, the arm was up. So if we go back in our notes here, this is increasing. Because as my x values increase, my y values increase. This is also increasing. As my x values increase, my y values increase. But if we looked at this one, and even if you looked at your data here, goes 8, 4, 2, 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125, you can see that our graph is now decreasing. Okay, so x-intercepts are still none, y-intercept is 1 because my a value is 1, and behavior is going from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1, that actually hasn't changed. Domain goes from negative infinity to infinity, range goes from 0 to infinity. But make sure you label that y-intercept of 1. And you can see that as your x values increase, your y values decrease. So this is a decreasing function. So you might anticipate for this next graph, well, my a values 8. That might mean my y-intercept 8. x-intercepts should be none. My domain should be negative infinity to infinity. My range should be zero to infinity, round brackets. It's quite the round bracket, round brackets. And my end behavior should still go from quadrant two to quadrant one. And it should be decreasing. How do I know? Because my B value is less than one. Let's graph it and see if all of this is actually true. So if I put it in here and I put in eight, times 1 oops, divided by 4 to the power of x, zoom 6, and there it is. You can see that my graph is going from quadrant 1 to quadrant, sorry, quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. It's a little bit hard to see, so if you want to zoom out and make your y max a little bit bigger, you can see it actually cross the axis. So it is going from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. You can see my y-intercept comes up as 8. It doesn't cross the x-axis, so what we predicted is true. Let's graph it. So y-intercept of 8, this is my x-axis and my y-axis, approaches 0 but never crosses 0. So this is what we're going to see for exponential functions, okay? You're going to either see exponential growth or increasing functions, or you're going to see exponential dec decay or decreasing functions. All right, let's take a look at the next page and summarize some of the characteristics that we were just looking at. So we notice that A always represents our y-intercept. There are never any x-intercepts because the graph never touches the x-axis. The domain is always negative infinity to infinity. The range is always 0 to infinity. And we've got a round bracket there because it never touches that x-axis. So these two, our domain and range, will never change. And the end behavior will always be quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. All right, if we look here in summary, the key ideas, an exponential function has that form. All exponential functions of the form f of x equals a times b to the power of x, where a is going to be greater than 0 and b is greater than 0. 
and b is not equal to 1 have the following characteristics and they're the same as what we should we um, summarized above there note domain and range when you see it in this format that means negative infinity to infinity and this one means from 0 to infinity okay now we're looking at increasing functions and decreasing functions increasing is when b is greater than 1 and a is greater than 0 decreasing when a sorry when b is between 0 and 1 and a is greater than 0 so when we have fractions or decimal values between 0 and 1. That's when we saw the decreasing function, when b is that value. But a in both cases is positive. If a is negative, there's a bit of a different behavior, and we can look at that as well. Thanks for joining me today.